thank you so much for showing up for our session today on uh, introducing characters by book and uh, series Bible 101. My name is Ryan. If you can hear me, just post a message in the chat with your name, maybe where you are. Just let me know that you can hear and uh, go from there. All right. We got some people. Awesome. People somebody, can hear. Somebody, yeah. Somebody can hear you. Welcome. Got somebody from Ottawa. Travis, got somebody from Ottawa. Nice. And from Brockville as well, I see. Not far from Ottawa. Cool. Awesome. So with me I'm here are over. Cameron and Travis. Welcome, everyone. Glad to be here. Excited to see you all. Got Scotland, North Carolina, New Zealand, Vancouver, South Africa, Florida, New Jersey, Pittsburgh, Ohio. Just too many to read. Holy cow. People <laughs> from all over. Germany. So we'll get started in just a couple minutes, let people come in while we're waiting. Is there anything in particular, if there's anything in particular that you'd like to know more about today, feel free to post that in the chat and we can see if we can try to incorporate that into the presentation. Yeah, fellow Oklahoma person I saw, that's where I am. Vic is on the second book of six series with the same characters. So this will be perfect for you. <laughs> Cindy's not sure if she's using the new feature correctly. I'm not sure if you can use it incorrectly, but we'll definitely help you out there. Yeah. Lily asked, where do you keep your series Bible? Is there a wiki or other program you recommend? We'll definitely be talking about that. Peggy, yes, this will be recorded. It is currently being recorded, so we will be able to share it after. Julianne asks if there's a way to transfer character notes between series versus books. Timeline tiny, timing, somebody asks. Can we use other online drives other than Dropbox? Just reading these so you guys hear them so we can answer them later. Cameron, if you see, there should be a question mark next to some of the next to the questions as, as you go through them. If you just click the question mark, that should save them as questions for later too. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't know that either. That's a newish feature. All right. We'll give it one more minute and then we'll get started. And I see a note asking us to speak clearly and slowly for those that may not be the strongest English speakers. Okay. Portia, this talk is specific to these features. There is actually another training later today at 3 p.m. that Travis will be doing. That's a more generalized training. So if you want to learn about all the features of Plotter in a more general way, that talk will be more relevant to you. But this one is going to be more specific to features presented on the slide here. And I just see David asking if you need a series Bible for a single book. You don't have to have a series Bible for a single book, but it can be a good way of keeping track of behind the scene details that you want to keep track of apart from the book itself. So then we can go into that in more detail when we go into the training part of this. Awesome. So with that, we'll get started. So we're going to get started by showing you how the characters by book feature works. And Travis is going to do that. Cameron, is there anything you want to say before we jump into that? No, it's, uh, yeah, just that this is a feature we're really excited about. We know a lot of people have been asking us for this, and we think it's really going to change the game for how you plan your stories. And so we can't wait to show you. So that's all. Go ahead, Travis. Excellent. Thank you, Cameron and Ryan. So I'm going to share my screen. So you should now all be able to see the timeline for our Plotter Pro demo of the Three Little Pigs. And we use this because it's a demo that most people are familiar with this story. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the top toolbar and navigate to the characters tab. Click on the characters tab. It'll bring up all the list of characters that we've already loaded into this plotter file for us. For now, we're going to focus on the wolf as the character. So as we know, when you're writing a novel or you're writing a story, your characters are going to go through a transformation, go through their character arc from book to book and throughout the entire series. And this is a new feature that I am extremely excited about because it clearly allows you to keep track of all of those features and your character's story arc from over the entire series and from book to book as you go along. So what you would typically see in previous versions of Plotter is what we now call the series view of, or the core view of the character. And here we can see the wolf. So if we click on the wolf, on the character card, it brings up the details that we can change. We have the wolf's name, the category, right now he's uncategorized, and we have a short description. He wants to eat the pigs. We can also add in our choose our character thumbnail. 
add in any notes that we have pertaining to the wolf. And we also have the point of being able to add attributes. So here we have the attributes type of house for the wolf. This is blank because the wolf, his house doesn't matter in this series. We're focusing on the pig's houses. In this, here we have written down that his role is an antagonist, he's male, and his primary trait is that he is hungry. And we can also click on add templates and add a variety of other templates that we might want to keep track of the wolf. So we have the character arc, the character bio, different character sheets. Character arc is one that I would normally keep track of, or the character bio, if it's a main character, is the main one that I would always try to include. And this allows us to keep track of nickname, age, gender, race, eye color, and so forth. So if we click choose on that, we can see we now have another template loaded in. So we can say hair color is brown because we know that from the photo. If we hit enter, that saves that as the new attributes. So the character card has now been expanded to have the main description, our custom attributes, and the character bio template that we've included. And if we go to character bio, we can include the nickname Big Bad Wolf. Now under category, we can click on category, and this shows a variety of options that we have. We have main, antagonist, supporting, ally, other, and uncategorized. In the series, overall, the wolf is the antagonist. So we're going to click antagonist, and we'll see that now on the left-hand side, the wolf has popped up under the heading antagonist. The other thing that's important to remember when you're working with these character nut cards is to connect the character to the card that it belongs, or to the book that it belongs to. So if we can click on the plus icon, and we can see we can add it to the series as well, or we can take it off by clicking the X. And this just allows us, when we're filtering later on, to make sure the wolf is showing up where we need the wolf to be when we're filtering out our view of things. So this allows us to set up who the wolf is for the entire series. But who is the wolf in the first book? So we click three little pigs at the top of the character card. It brings up the wolf's card again, but now we have the wolf is listed as the name again. We don't have a short description because now we have to take a look at who is the wolf for this, or what is the wolf in this book? So for this, we're going to say the wolf is hungry for pigs. And on this, we're going to categorize the wolf again as an antagonist because he is the antagonist and the main characters in this book are going to be the three little pigs. We can again add our notes for the wolf, adjust any attributes that we may need. So he's still the antagonist and he's still hungry. We can also adjust our character bio. So to make sure there's any character, or if there's any questions that pop up, I'll try to get back to them in just a little bit, but please continue adding your questions. So under character bio, we can add in our character bio here again as well. So we can go back to the hair color is brown and we can keep track of these details. Now, these details aren't preloaded in as we go along because the character is going to have gone through changes from book to book. So this is a very useful feature to be able to go in and not have to delete everything from a previous template and just focus on building out the templates for each book that the character or that the character is in. So now that we have what the wolf is in the three little pigs, he's the antagonist and he's hungry for pigs. And we have all of this other information we can fill in. And then we can click close. And we still have, now we have the character card for the three little pigs series. Now it is important to make sure the wolf is connected to the books in the series in order for them to show up appropriately in what we're doing here with these different tabs across the top. So when the wolf strikes back the second book in the series, the wolf is angry. He has come down the chimney. He's burned his bottom on a pot of hot soup and he's gone away and he's healed himself. And now he's come back and he's attacking the pigs. And this is his second form of attack on this. So for this, because the book is called The Wolf Strikes Back, the wolf is going to be the main character in this. So we can add the wolf as a main character for book number two. And then under the short description, we can say the wolf is angry and wants revenge. No longer just hungry. He's now angry as well. Under our attributes, we can go in and we can change his role of antagonist to main if we want to and have this here and then add in any character changes that may have had for the character as we go along. So again, the wolf strikes back. We can go back and say the hair color is brown. 
and we can add because he's come down the chimney and he's gotten burned, we can say with black mark from being singed in the fire. And then we have really quickly for this book now, we have the change in who the wolf is for this book as we go along. And then now that we have the wolf strikes back, we know in this hypothetical version of the wolf strikes back, he comes down. I like to think that he uses a bulldozer and smashes down the brick wall of the house and chases the pigs into the forest and hunts them on his own terms. But obviously that book is not going to end the way the wolf anticipates. And Mother Pig is going to come swooping in at the last minute and help save the pigs and rescue them from the wolf and the wolf strikes back. So that leads us to the third book in our series, which we have is The Return of the Mother Pig. So in this instance, we still have the wolf as being the name of the character. But in this, we can put him down as other. He's not the main character because the main characters are going to be the mother pig and the three little pigs. He's not necessarily the antagonist because he's the one that's being hunted and being chased down. So we can put him down as other in this. And we can say the wolf is being hunted by the pigs in this and show just what this character is now looking like in this series. And again, we can add our attributes and have the role for this. We can put down as being don't want to say the victim, but we'll say the pursued for this book. And we have still have the primary traits. And this primary trait we can actually put down as being fearful. Because now he's the one that's being hunted and chased around. And again, we can also go into our character bio if we want to and add more information to the character bio. Or we also have the option of adding more templates. So for any of these tabs across the top, we can add templates that we want to keep track of. So if this, you may want to keep track of how his personality has changed, the, say the Myers-Briggs type indicator. So we can go and choose that, and we can keep track of how his personality has changed from book to book as well. But this gives us an idea really quickly. If we click close, we can really quickly now, if we go back and see the series view, the description of the wolf is that he wants to eat the pigs and his category is an antagonist. And the three little pigs, we have the wolf is hungry for pigs and he is the antagonist because that's the first book in the series. The wolf strikes back. The wolf is angry and wants revenge and his category is main. He's more of a main character for this. And we see some changes in his hair coloring. And in Return of the Mother Pig, the wolf is being hunted by the pigs and his category is other because he's the one that's being pursued. And we have that listed down under our custom attributes. Tra Travis? Yes. Can we pause for a second and go to the project tab and show people how the series is created in the first place? Of course. So if we go up to the upper left-hand corner of the screen, click on the projects tab, we can now see what the series tab looks like, what the projects tab looks like. In the projects tab, we have the series. So this is where you're going to keep track of all of the information for the entire series as a whole, being the name of the series, the genre that it's going to be in, the premise of the series, the pig defends themselves from a hungry wolf. And the theme of the series is hard work and dedication pays off. Now in this, we have the books, the three little pigs, the wolf strikes back and the return of mother pig already loaded as three books here. Now, again, with Plotter, if you go to the upper left-hand corner, you can see there's a drop-down menu. And this also has the list of the books. We can look at the series view or each of the individual books here. If we want to add a new book into this series, then what we can do is we can click this plus icon on the book down under the term books. And if we click on that's going to bring up an option for just this book. So we can say the next sequel for this book. We can give the same premise being the pigs are being chased by a hungry wolf, the genre fairy tale and the theme. We can go back with hard work and dedication pays off for this. So we can click save. And that is going to create a brand new book for us in this series. Now, these other books that we already have, The Three Little Pigs and The Return of the Wolf, if you click on this edit icon above the book, that's where you can put in the individual details for book number two, the title, the premise, the genre, and the theme, and click Save for this. So here in the series section, we have the overall name, premise, genre, and theme for the series, and then if I clicking on the books or hovering over the books and clicking the edit icon allows us to give that information specific to the book that you're working on. We can also, if we want to, click on the image icon 
and add an image of say mother pig's house and choose that to be the book cover for this book. Now, the other thing that we can do when we are adding a book into the series is we can also choose to start with a template. So if we click start with template, that is going to bring up a list of templates that are preloaded in the plotter. We have the templates that you've developed yourself and saved. And then we have the variety of starter templates that come along with plotter from the action adventure to the Freytag's pyramid, hero's journey, romancing the beat. There's a variety of different templates. So for this, we'll choose a 12 step mystery formula. And if we click on this, it shows us that it has two plot lines, the 12 step mystery formula and the 12 step mystery formula subplot. And it tells us what the scene cards are going to be from disclose the mystery to the sleuth background to the climax. If we click choose on this, that is going to create a new untitled book for us. This is where we would hit the edit icon and add in pig, mis pig mystery as a title and click save. So now if we click on the next sequel book, it is going to open that timeline for the book and we can start working on this. So if we see with creating a blank project, it gives you one chapter, one plot line. We can put this, change the title from the next sequel to the main plot and click enter. And that sets that up. And we can also change our title to auto. Now, if we put this to the term auto, that is going to create a chapter one and allow this system to automatically renumber as we add new chapters, it'll automatically add chapter two and chapter three as we go along and we can build out our template from there. If we click in the upper left-hand corner, we can click on the pig mystery and that'll show us what using a template looks like. We've chosen the 12 step mystery formula template. The reminder of that is on the left-hand side. So you just have to change those titles, but they're there to remind you, this is the template you're using. And we can see we have the plot lines preloaded into this for us to see, or then the scene cards preloaded and we can go in and click on the scene card and it gives you the details of, you can hit enter and add your description above, or you can choose to delete all of the text if you want, but it tells you what is the beginning of act one and what you need, the details you need to keep in track for this beat, ideas to consider, any notes that you need to keep in mind. And it gives you a breakdown of that. This first section should take about the first 10% of the story. That's a rough guideline for this. So that can help you figure out the proper beating and pacing for a mystery template as you're going along or any template that you're going to be using. Are there any other questions that pertaining to the project tab and building the books? Let's see if there's anything here. It doesn't look like it for the projects tab and building the books. Excellent. So should we do you want to go back to work on more of the characters in the series yeah. description and how that looks, or should we go into the series Bible and keeping track of everything in your Bible? We can go back to the characters by book. Characters by book. All right. Yeah. I think showing people that again now would maybe help them now that they know how to set up the project. Some people are confused by that. So now if we show them again, how they can see the changes between books that might be helpful to show that again. Exactly. So we're going to go back to the three little pigs. And that's something that is important to remember is you can navigate. You don't have to go back to the project tab to navigate between book to book. All you have to do is go to this upper left drop down menu and choose which book in the series you want to work with. So now you can see in this drop down menu, we do have the series view, the three books that we already had. And now we also have the next sequel and the pig mystery. So we're going to stay on the three little pigs and go back to our character tab. And this is where it is. So very much like in the project tab, the series tab on this character card is going to be the details for the wolf for the overall series that you're working on. And this is what I personally refer to as my core character. This is the character that I developed for this, and this is how what they're going to change from as we go along. We can see the three little pigs that it's connected to. And now we can see that we have the three little pigs, the wolf strikes back, and the return of mother pig across the top. If we click the plus icon and click the next sequel, now the next sequel is going to pop up as well. So this is where I was saying that it's important to ensure that you have connected your character to the different books that they belong to. Because as you can see, if the character is not connected to the book, like the pig mystery, it's not showing up here. We only From this point, it looks like there's only four. So to fix that, we would again 
click the plus icon beside the word books and click on pig mystery. And then now we have the pig mystery listed here as well. So now we have the way the wolf changes in the initial book. So the initial character in book one is going to be very akin to the character that you've developed for the series. This is their launching point. And then you keep track of what has happened in The Wolf Strikes Back and how, or through throughout the Three Little Pigs and in between books. And now you're going to take a look at how the character has changed for book number two. Again, being angry and wanting revenge. We're going to again keep track of Return of Mother Pig. Now the wolf is on the back foot and he's the one that's being pursued. And then we can go into the next sequel and decide what changes have happened in this. So perhaps in the return of mother pig, he's being chased and he's in trouble. So we can say that the wolf has disappeared and we don't know why the wolf has disappeared. And we can go back into the attributes that we have of the role character bio. And we can say for the fur color for this or the hair color, we can actually say missing patches of hair. It was a rough battle with Mother Pig and the Three Little Pigs. And we can put this in the category as, and we can go as an other, or perhaps they've become, they're going to become allies in this one. So we can collect this, connect this through, and we can make the storyline behind the next sequel being that by the end of the return of Mother Pig, the wolf is scuffed up, missing patches of fur, and he has disappeared, but that's just so we can heal a little bit. And then he comes back and becomes an ally of the three little pigs and mother pig who have gone off trying to find him now out of compassion. And then in the pig mystery, we can have this set up as an ally as well, or even a supporting character and say that helping solve the mystery of missing food in the forest show there. So again, if we look at this going across, we have the return of mother pig. He is the pursued and he's being hunted by the pigs. In the next sequel, the wolf has disappeared and he's an ally. And the pig mystery, he has come back and he's helping solve the mystery of the missing food in the forest. And he's now a supporting character for the series. What are some questions that we have? Yeah, so there are a lot of questions. I'm trying to answer them in Slack, so we or not in Slack in the chat, so that we don't get overwhelmed here. But and I think we got caught up as far as like characters, the scene that are the characters tab that you're showing right now. Let me let me start the Q and A mode, and then you'll see the questions. Oh, good. Yeah, I was wondering how that would work. All right, well, fun. So you have to click on the so just Travis. The green means it's not showing, so you have to click on the question for it to show up to everyone. Okay, so just go one by one and go through them all, or? Let's see. So one question, quick one, quick one is just how do we use attributes? So how do you set up the attributes in the first place to put to set up in each book? Of course. So what we can do is we'll look at the three little pigs or the series view for the wolf and click on the character card. And these are the attributes. So there's two ways of clicking on, of developing the attributes and adding them. So one second, we have to go back to the, you have to click. Okay, now it's showing again. Oh, sorry. Okay. So once you've gone in and you've, I'm going to close this. So we've, we're at the wolf as the antagonist. If you click on the character card, that is going to bring up the notes section. And then there's also the attributes. The attributes card is going to be any of the key attributes that you want to keep track of for this character or for the characters throughout your book. And to do that, all you have to do is click on this term configure in the upper right-hand corner of that box. And that's going to bring up a pop-up menu for you. And this is where we can keep track of the, of, attitude, of the attributes. So we can add an attribute of attitude for the character. So type in attitude and click add. Now we have attitude listed in here and we can click on these three little lines and drag it up to the top if we so wish. And we, we can rearrange these to what is going to be the easiest for you to remember, or what's nicest for you to be able to look at. This is what you can keep track of. So if we click close on this now, we can see that we now have attitude added above the type of house. So again, this is any parameters that you want to keep track of. If we click configure, we can also, well, if we look at this, we can see this is now what is called short text input so we can put in a couple of words nothing overly long just a couple of words as details what we want but if we click on the configure button we can click on the paragraph structure and this par clicking on paragraph if we click close 
turns this into a rich text format. So this is where we can actually type in more a paragraph of text, more information. We can change the font, the size, the bold italics, add titles, subtitles, quotes, different lists. And we can also add links. This link feature is one of my favorite features for the scene cards and for the character cards. Because instead of having to clutter up your notes with all the information you want, if there is an information about the fur structure or fur patterns of a wolf that you found on a website, you can type in the terms wolf fur pattern and link that to the website. So instead of having to copy and paste everything or clutter up your browser with a bunch of bookmarks, you can click on the link, pop up the information that you need when you need it. So that's very convenient. And you can also add a photo for reference if you so need. If you have a nice photo of a wolf you want to use, you can add this in as a reference. Now, the key point here is anything that you add, any photos you add into your notes or your attributes are only going to stay within your notes and attributes. Only the character thumbnail will show up on the left-hand side. So all of these will stay within your notes. But once you have this set up the way you want it to be, so we can click configure, take off paragraph, we can also add in, for example, the hunger level because we are keeping track of the wolf through this entire series, we can click add and bring that back up to the top above attitude. And then we can now click save as template. So if we click save as template, instead of custom template, we're going to say hunger template. And you can add a description, so the levels of hunger. And if there's a source link that we are using, we can use that. So we can click save and click close on that. Now we can actually, when we go into add a template, we can click add template, and we now have the hunger template listed here as well. And we can click choose that, and now that's going to give us the levels of hunger that we had and the role, primary trait, attitude, and hunger level built in as our custom attributes here. And if you decide you do not want to use this template anymore, you can click remove template and delete that template out for yourself. The other way of keeping track of attributes, say you know that there are certain attributes you always keep track of for all of your characters in every book you do. In the upper toolbar, you can click Attributes button, and that brings up the exact same custom attributes menu that we looked at before. And you can treat it the same way that we did within the character card. That's the nice thing about Plotter is there's oftentimes multiple ways of doing the same thing. So if you forget one method, there's another method usually that you can find. Do we have another question? Yeah, there are, there are more questions. Let's flip back over to here. So yeah, let's look at some of these questions. Uh, I'd love to know if there's a way to transfer character notes between series versus book profiles. So your character notes, if I'm understanding the question correctly, your notes, characters, and places, and tags are going to be shared across all the books within the series. So if we're here and we take a look at for example, oh, me, a series, pardon me? Let me switch back. Let me switch back over to your screen oh, here. Right. So if we look right here, we're in the, th we're in the three little pigs series and we have pig number three, the wolf as antagonist and the other pigs listed in here. If we go back and look at the wolf strikes back and we go to our characters, we have the exact same characters and we have the exact same list going across the top. So your characters, your notes, and your places are automatically shared from book to book within the series. You don't have to worry about having to go back and change those. If I understood the question correctly. All right, let's switch back over to... How do... I think they're asking if you can share a character to another series, add a pig to another fairy tale. Yes. So that's the thing is right now, as was stated in chat, those characters are shared within the same series within the same book. If you've got a new series that you're working on, you would have to copy and paste that information in to the new series. Another question. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to, don't know how to erase the questions from here, but uh, let's see. Here's one that I can answer. Can we use any other online drives other than Dropbox? Yes, but it doesn't sync between the mobile app and Plotter. Plotter is directly integrated with Dropbox. And so if you use any others, you just put your Plotter files in that, like if it's a OneDrive or iCloud, you just put your Plotter files in that folder for that service. And then when you, if you use the mobile apps, it's a little bit more difficult to sync them there. 
it's possible, but it, it's a little more difficult. But we've integrated directly with Dropbox, so it makes it a lot easier. So I would recommend that one. Another question, will the training deck be made available or already in help docs? I think, Travis, and maybe you know this, but do we already talk about this in the help docs? I'm pretty sure we've put out some help docs for this. And if not, they'll be coming soon. Yeah, there is for the character series, tracking the character arc through the series. I'm not sure if that's in the help docs yet, but we do have a, a weekly Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern training session with myself where I do an overview of all that is plotter, a high level overview. And if you go into our documentation or our YouTube, we do have a variety of videos that really go in depth in each and every topic that you may have an issue with. Great. Okay, uh, one quick one. I'm having problems exporting to Scrivener. Who should I contact, please? Feel free to email us at support at plotter.com. We'd love to help you. We're really good at responding there. People always tell us how great our customer service is. Troy Benton, he's awesome, and he will answer you. So if you have problems exporting to Scrivener, contact support at plotter.com. Another question. I tried adding books to a project, but only the first has a template I wanted to use. How do I make them all the same template? So maybe that's something, Travis, you can show really quickly. Most definitely. So if we, what I'll do is I'll go to the next SQL because we created that as a blank project here. So what we can do with this is if you already have the book developed and built in the series and it doesn't have the template that you're looking for, you can, where you add a new timeline by clicking the plus, you can either add a new timeline or if you hover over that and click use template, that opens up the template list that we have. So then you can go into this and say, I want to use the hero's journey, for example, and click hero's journey and click choose. And now you have that template in that document and you can do more than one. You can add other, oh, sorry. You can add other templates as well if you wanted to. So you could do a hero's journey mixed with a 12 step mystery formula. And that is going to give you the ability to add more than one template in. So you can actually break out the different timelines for the different templates. If there's one you don't want, you can hover over and click the delete icon and it always gives you a confirmation. So don't worry about accidentally clicking it. But if you just wanted the hero's journey, you can add it in and then delete the one that says main. And now you have that template built in for that book. So in short, hover over the timeline edition, click use template, choose the template you want, and it's loaded in for you. Can you also show how to create a book from a template just really quick? Of course. So if we're back in the series project, we can click start with template. Instead, we can click plus to start a new book that's blank, or we can click start with template. And then that is going to give us all the starter templates. And we can go down to a, for example, a action adventure plot and click choose for that. And that is going to create a new book with that in mind. So we click the edit icon in this. We can say the pig act and click save and now when we click on pig action that's going to be all auto automatically preloaded with the template of the action adventure plot and again it does show up on the left hand side to remind you which template you're working on and you can just click on that to edit that title to main plot line or whatever you want that title to be brigham asks is there a way to add a custom template yes and maybe we'll show actually let me just the Q Oh, just, just broke up on us. There we go. Oh, I did? Yeah, no, I back. just added a question to the Q&A. We'll show that in the middle, uh, in a little bit. Okay. okay, so going through these other questions, let's see, maybe let's see this one. And this is a question that a lot of people have asked, a similar question to this. I've created a few different series Bibles, but now I'm realizing that many characters cross through all of them. Is there a way to cross series connect? So if it's all in the same project, within plotter it's very easy but if they're in different project files then there's no way to merge them right now but if you contact support we can help you through that so feel free to email us support at plotter.com here's another question can i remove a character from a series i no longer need otherwise the list of characters becomes quite long yeah so that is something you can remove a character from the series that you don't need but you need to bear in mind that if you do that you can't change deleting the character and that's going to delete it from all of the books within the series. So if you're going to get rid of a character, you're deleting the character. What I usually recommend doing, and I can show you within the characters, if we can share my screen again, 
I can yeah. show you the way I handle that because I don't like to get rid of ideas or notes or characters or things because you never know when they might come back up and you decide to use them for a spinoff or something else. So what you can do with this is in the upper timeline or at the upper toolbar, you click on categories. I always add a category of obsolete. You click add and it's listed in there and you can keep it down at the bottom if you want. So now what this does is you can click on, say, for example, Mother Pig and decide we're not going to use Mother Pig for any of these things. You can click on her character and put her under the category of obsolete and close. So now she's shoved down off to the bottom. We don't need to worry about that character. We don't have to have it added in, added into the timeline section. But if we do need to go back and reference or we do decide to use her again, we can pull her out of the obsolete category and still have her there. And if need be that we really don't want to have it listed at all, we can use our filter and only show the things, have show the sections, all the sections except for obsolete. And that way you don't lose anything. So you can delete it or you can save it, save yourself some potential work and just put it on as an obsolete category. Yeah, great idea there. Keybill asks if you can export files or the series Bible to Word Anvil. If Word Anvil accepts a Microsoft Word file, you could do it that way. So you could export to Word and then import to Word Anvil with your Word file. That's one way to do it if they accept that. I'm not sure if World Anvil accepts an import of a Word file. But that's something I can look into. I use World Anvil frequently for oh, cool. okay. world building. So I can play around and see what integrations I can sort out with Plotter for future responses. Leanne asked if all this works the same for the world building in the places tab. Not currently. We're exploring that. We've got some ideas for better world building. And so it might, so in the future, we might add this to the places tab as well. Yeah. So we don't have the ability to go from book to book across. But the places tab, if I've, which I've pulled up here now, you can see it is here and there's a lot of functionality you can do with world building. So if you hover over the brick house, you can click the two white boxes and that duplicates the scene card. And it, one of the reasons why I like to do this is, for example, the little pigs have left their mother's house. They've built their houses during the day. It's got a light friendly atmosphere. They're excited. It's got a certain smell, certain tone to it. And at night when they're by themselves for the first time, it's going to have a different atmosphere. It's going to be more spooky. It's going to have more fearful sounding noises and more mystery around surrounded it. So you can actually create two variations of the same place and really put in your sensory details and the information you need to allow your, your readers to get pulled in and stand shoulder to shoulder with your character in that location. Great. All right, let's go back to one of, let's go back to the questions here. We've actually answered multiple of these. So it's, it's, I'm trying to filter through and find the ones that we haven't answered yet. One quick question is how did you get the D and D templates in there, Travis? That's just templates that were developed for the, that we developed for the program and they're listed in there. And it's a great method of really getting in depth in developing your characters. So if we go to the character tab and we say, let's say mother pig, we can click add template and use her as an NPC sheet. But if we choose that, then we can see that we have, and when you do add these templates, it gives you a link to get more information about the origin of the template. And it also gives you information on how to use that template. So what is the NPC size? And it determines how much space it occupies in combat. And you can go down and really get into all of these world building details for the characters that you might want. So Patricia asked, is the series Bible just working on characters? Yes and no. So the ability to see your character's arc throughout the whole series is only working on characters. But the series Bible is essentially all of Plotter. All of Plotter becomes your series Bible. All the notes, characters, and places, and your timelines for the whole series show up in one project. A Plotter project has the whole series, the information for the whole series in one place. So all of Plotter really is your series Bible. But being able to see the changes from one book to the next is that only works for characters currently, yes. But I can, should I show how the series view looks and give some examples of how you can potentially use the series view to build a Bible from that? Yeah, that's a great idea, yeah. All right, so if we go into our projects tab or even just into our timeline, but if you click on the drop down menu in the upper left and click three little pigs series view. Now for most of you, this view is going to be a blank template view. This is how I personally have developed my series views for the books that I work on. And my first, so what my items across the top are the book one in between book one and two book two and so forth. 
Then I have my book one synopsis. So what happens in book one? Now this is the series view for this or the series Bible is for my information, for my world building, my canon, answering fan questions, developing spin-offs and short stories and things like that. So the first book of the series, Mother Pig sends the pigs out because she doesn't have enough food. They build their houses, they get attacked by a wolf. In the end, the wolf comes down the brick house chimney, burns his bottom on the fire and runs away. In book two, the way I've developed it is the wolf arrives back at the house of pig three to find all three pigs still live together, uses the bulldozer to smash down the brick wall and chases the pigs into the forest. So that's the synopsis of book two. But how did we get from having the burned bottom to driving a bulldozer? And that's where the in-between notes come. So for myself, I'm to remember this is the wolf went home and got bandaged, healed and developed a plan. Then he studied, got his bulldozer license, rented a bulldozer and went to kickstart book number two. I also like to keep track of the overall timeline of the entire series. So book one is from June to July. The healing and the planning process took three months. Book two is from October to November. This can be days, weeks, months, years, however long your series actually is. But this gives you an idea of, so you don't have to remember all the details, especially if you've got a series that's five or six books long, or even three books long. You don't have to remember what season book one was in versus book three because you have this down in your behind the scene notes for this. And then also deaths and injuries, and this is also in new characters. So if any characters died or got grievously injured in book one, or if any characters died or were injured or added to the characters in, or added to the books in between books, I can keep track of all of these things here. Again, so I don't have to go through all my notes for each and every book to see where I did things. I can keep track of the key elements and character additions and subtractions and overall changes from book to book here as well. This you can keep track of also any clues that you may have had from book to book. If you've done different, you may have done book one as an action adventure and book two as a romance. You can keep track of those details here. So this, the series Bible, the series view is your behind the scenes, behind the screen, look at the entire world and keeping track and of all those details so you don't lose anything important. Travis, can you show them really quick how to get to the series view again, slowly? The series view, you can click on this upper timeline or toolbar, and we have choosing from the book timeline of the three little pigs, or at the top, there's always the series view. So the series view is always there. It just may be blank for you, and you have to develop what you want to keep track of. And the key thing to remember for this, or any plot lines that you have in your book, is what are the plot lines that you feel you need to keep track of? What is the information that you most want to keep in order? So the series view is always going to be in this upper left-hand corner. It's always going to be the top section to choose from. And then some, somebody also asked how you created that series view. And that's Travis's own creation. It's brilliant. I'm gonna, I, I've started using it. And I think we're working on making it a template for, for you guys to be able to use in your own projects because that we don't really have series view templates, but, but the way that he's created is really brilliant. And he just made it himself. So you can take a screenshot and look at it, make it yourself or wait for that template, or maybe we'll send that out with the replay. But either way, you can make it however you like in there, whatever makes sense for you. Plotter is meant to be flexible. And this is, and for making it, like we said before, if you have a blank template that you're working on, all you have to do is click on the plus icon and add a new thing. And you can say clues, for example and hit enter. And then these are any of the clues that you want to keep track of for book one and going along in between. So this is what I found I needed to keep track of for my books. And thank you, Cameron. I appreciate that you find it to be helpful. But it really just keeps track of all of those details that, again, the things you don't want to go obsolete and things you don't want to forget. But by all means, please build this yourself until it gets developed for you. OK, let's see. Okay, here's a good question. David says, maybe this is obvious, but what if you start with a single book, then decide it could be a series? Can you start a series from book one? Most definitely. So if you're in with this, the Three Little Pigs series view that we're in here or back on the project tab, when you add a new book to and you start a new project and this just has one book, you're still going to have this series information up across the top and it's just going to have one book in the series. All you have to do is add another book and it's just going to populate across and develop the series into however many books you want it to be. Travis, can we start a new book and show people what that would look like? Start a new file altogether? Yep. Start a new file. Yep. yep. 
so we can click here from here. We can click into dashboard and we can click, I'll click create a blank project. And we'll say test project one, click OK. And it's going to bring this over. I believe I'm going to have to stop sharing and reshare this new project. So just give me one moment. There we are. So this is our test project one that we just developed. And all that all we did for that was, if in case it didn't show up, but I think it did, is go into the dashboard in the upper right-hand corner and click to create a blank project. If we click create from template, that's going to create a bring up the template list and allow you to choose from which template you want to work with for that project. But if we exit out of our dashboard, this is what we have for our blank project here. Now, if we look at our time at our project tab, we have the series as test project one premise and all this information is blank and we only have one book here. So within this one book, we can go back to our timeline of it and we can start building out and say the introduction. And then we can add a chapter two and add a new plot and say that this one is going or a new scene card and say that this is going to be the inciting incident. Click enter and then we can go along and build out just by clicking this plus icon and go chapter to chapter and build all the chapters out and add the scene cards. The other nice thing is you can click in between chapter one and two and say you decide from between the introduction and inciting incident, you want to have a flashback. You can do chapter two as a flashback and add those in so you can move these around. And if you decide that you don't want the flashback before the inciting incident, you can click on it and drag it over and it will. you can move the scene cards around really quickly for yourself. If you're in building already and developing, so you accidentally hit start from a blank project when you wanted to use a template, as I said before, you can hover over the plot edition, click use template, click the action adventure plot, for example, and click choose. And then you have that developed in and you can build off of that plot line if you so wish. So to get back to the question, can then you can you then show add some more books to the project? And of course, people had to add those to new characters. So if we go back into the test project or the project tab here, we can click the plus icon and or we can say start with the template and we'll say we'll start with the action adventure plot and click choose. And now we have an untitled book. So we'll say test book two and click save. Then we can add another. Say we want to start the template. The next one we want to be a romance. So we'll say romancing the beat and click choose. And again, click the edit button and click the test book three romance and click save. So now if we go into test project one, like we did, we had the main plot line that we had here. And we again, clicking at the top, we now have the test project series view, which we can look at the test project one, and we can go from book to book as we see fit. So we can go to book two, or we can click on to book three romance. Now, if we go back to book one and we go to characters, we don't have any characters built in here yet, but we can click the plus icon and click a new character and call him Dave. Dave is going to be our main character. And the short description will say be Dave goes on an adventure. And click close. We can see here, this only character only shows up and it doesn't quite look the same way as it did before. So what we need to do for that is to connect Dave to the books that he is going to be in. So if we click the plus icon, we can connect Dave to the series. And now you can see the series tab has popped up. We can connect him to test book one, test book two, and test book three. Now we have what Dave is for the original series, and then we can go and track his changes and performance from book to book as we go along and develop that out. So we can say again, in book one, he's the main character and he does an adventure and for our attributes we can now this doesn't have any attributes so we can say his mood is one attribute and his we'll say we'll keep track of a sense of style as it changes as he develops as a character we can save this as a template to say dave template and click save and click close now we have those custom attributes, and they're also going to show up as Dave template here that we can choose to use as well for the other 
characters in the series. So we now have our series view. So we have Dave goes on a main adventure. Then in book two, we can say he's going to be a supporting character. And he is lost and needs help of a guide. And close that. And then in book three, he's going to be the main character again. And I'll say Dave falls in love with the guide. And there's the romance that we have. So we again take a look at these things. We have Dave as a main character or in the series, and he goes on an adventure. Book one, he's going on an adventure and he's the main character. Book two, he's lost and needs help of a guide, and he's now a supporting character because he's supporting the guide and trying to get out. And in book three, he falls in love with the guide and he's now the main character again for book number three. Great. Yeah, let's look back at these questions. We've got the most of them. Oh, here's a good one. Is what you're showing all included on regular plotter? Or, you, or do you need to upgrade to Plotter Pro? No, you don't have to upgrade to Plotter Pro to get this characters by book feature. Yeah. One question I did note that I wanted to keep track, that I wanted to comment on really quickly is someone said, is there a way to keep track of items? And there most certainly is. And this is where I find the tags come in very handy. Tags are going to help you keep track of any items or anything within the story that you want to. So what I'd like to do, we can take the categories and say, for example, a car and click add and close. Now we can click this plus icon under car and say a red car. And it's under the category of car. We can give it a color. We'll give it a nice red color here and click save. So what we can do now is with that tag, and there's a lot more you can do with tags. If you join the session at three o'clock, I can go more in depth into how tags work. But if you go to the timeline, we can now click on the inciting incident, for example, and click on the tags button and say red car. So now that's listed here. And now we only have three, one plot line and three scene cards, but imagine you have a fully built out like we did for the three little pigs. And you think, oh, did I remember to use the red car in this book? Rather than going through your notes and book by book and everything, all you have to do is click on the filter tab icon in the upper left-hand corner click red car under tags. The other scene cards disappear and we can see under inciting incident, there's a tag that says red car. That's popped up because the red car is listed there. So we know, yes, we use the red car, that item. It's in chapter two in the main plot line and you don't have to dig through all of your notes to try to find that information. You can click on the yellow timeline is filtered box and it goes back to normal. Great. Let's... Well, this is something that a lot of people have asked. Are there any fields that regenerate or do we have to fill them in each time for each book? I think that what that question is getting at is, are there any fields that automatically carry from book one to book two to book three? That's not currently how it works. It was just meant to see your changes from book one to book two and so forth. But we are working on a simple way to do that so that the right things carry over and the wrong things don't. It gets complicated and everybody wants to do it differently. So we're working on making that in an easy way. Someone also asked, and I can't find the question right now, if you could show how to export to Scrivener. And just to make it easier so you don't have to change your screens, maybe you can just show where they would find that export to Scrivener. Of course. So this is found in all of the different tabs across the top. But the timeline is going to be predominantly where you're going to spend most of your time in Plotter. So go to the upper right-hand corner. There's three little icon, three little dots, and an icon with an arrow pointing up off of a bar or off the ground. That is the export button. If you click on that, and if you click on MS Word, it is automatically going to develop an MS Word file for you. If you click on Scrivener, it's automatically going to develop a Scrivener file for you. And if you click on Advanced, this gives you the options of more in-depth options of the different export capabilities that you have. So whichever one is highlighted in blue, this one is MS Word, or it can be Scrivener. But if you go to MS Word, you can decide if anything that has a check mark on it is going to be exported. Let's say you don't want the title page, you can click off the title page. If you want the notes, but you don't need the tags, characters, and places, you you can take that off. So this, you can choose what you want to export and what you don't want to export. If you don't want the outline at all, you can click that and that'll take off the outline for you. So there's easy ways of doing it. Scrivener tab works very much the same way. The only difference is in Scrivener, you have an option of putting your description in the synopsis, the body, or the notes in Scrivener. 
And the other main difference is at this point, we're not able to export images into Scrivener. So there's no option of changing your image export options. Once you have those set the way you want it to be, and you're either on Scrivener or MS Word the way you like, click the green export button. And just like before, it's automatically going to develop that file for you. And no, it doesn't sync between, somebody asked if it's synced between Plotter and, and Scrivener automatically. It doesn't sync that. If you export it again, it'll export to a new project. Yeah. And that's a good point as well for within your dashboard. If you click import file, you can import from Scrivener. It's not going to. So if you've taken, say, the three little pigs, exported it to Scrivener, worked on it, made changes, and you import it back in the plotter, it's going to create a new project file for you as well. It, won't, it will not update the current project file that you have. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. Always things that are being worked on. Another question someone just asked, it's not really related to the series view necessarily, but is there a way to track a shift, a value shift from card to card? So somebody wants, just wants to see how you can add, apply attributes to scene cards and then change the value of a attribute from a card to another card. So if we click on introduction, we can add the attributes. We'll add an attribute of atmosphere. Add, and for example, we'll also add season as an attribute. Click add and click close. Oh, we'll see this as a template and we'll save this as the SA attributes and click save. And now that's saved in there. So we can click close and we can save. we can put in the atmosphere here it is going to be spooky and the season will say fall and click close. Now we have that listed in here. We go into our attributes. We have those attributes listed in there. If we go into the inciting incident, we have our attributes list here, and this is the same as attributes, but we can now say winter, or it's a, it's a, say it's a chilled atmosphere, and we'll say that it is a winter season, and click close. So for, carrots, for a scene card, the scene card, you can definitely change these attributes, and we'll say this is a hopeful atmosphere, and We'll call this a spring season. But if we're in this, we decide that we want to keep track of something else. We can click configure on any of these scene cards, not another atmosphere, and put this in to be the hook, or, sorry, the attribute, and click add the hook for what is the hook for this scene card that we're working on. We can click close and close on this. So now if we go back to inciting incident, hook has been added as an attribute here as well. And if we go back to the first scene card, hook has been added as an attribute here as well that we can fill in. Awesome. I think that's good. That's great. Let's go back to the questions. Cameron, is there anything we've missed from the questions here? Or are there any other questions people have about the series functionality specifically that they want us to go over? Not that I've seen. I think we're caught up with that. Somebody, uh, Patricia just asked if there's going to be, a, or she said she would love a printed instruction manual. And we're actually working on that, Patricia. So, so someday soon, hopefully, there will be a PDF instruction manual. And so while we wait to see if anyone else has any other questions, just another reminder that we do have in the other training is at 3 p.m. Eastern time, if you want a more generalized training. I just posted that link in the chat again for everyone. And that training, we do go over all of the tabs across the top, project, timeline, outline, notes, tag, et cetera. And we go a uh, high-level overview of all of the aspects of Plotter. Awesome. Well, if there are no more questions, I think we can wrap things up at this point. But thank you so much, everyone, for showing up. And thank you to Travis for leading this great demonstration. And Cameron, I guess I'll thank you as well. Uh, <laughs> oh, thanks. Somebody asked if you can sort a list of character names within categories and you can't sort them within the categories no to answer that question yeah that would be you would have to make the category name the or the category for the character that category name and would then you wouldn't be able to have them as a main or antagonist or anything of that sort great with that everyone have a great rest of your tuesday if you didn't get your question answered, feel free to email us support at plotter.com. There's a, a few at the end here about unrelated things. So we'll answer those in the email.